Bienvenidos and welcome all of the stylish supermodels out there. My name is Crossbite and today we're going to be looking at how bones work in hair. This is going to be a little different than my regular tutorials because it's going to be more informational and less of a guide on how to do things. But I am still going to kind of give you the tips and the basics of how all this is going to work. So starting with this handsome chap right here and I'm going to go ahead and create a freehand group. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to duplicate my material several times here. Uh, what the goal here is, is to create several different hairs that are distinct. And we're going to be applying different bone parameters to each of these. So we can kind of look at how the bones work and how the properties can manipulate hair in different ways. So while I'm just kind of doing the boring stuff here and drawing through this, uh, I think it's kind of important to keep in mind a, the hairstyle that you're going for, whether it be long hair, short hair, spiked hair, something crazy, you know, something I <laughs> can't even imagine. Um, but how would that how would that hair flow, you know, in real life, naturally? How would it actually flow? Would it be very wavy? Would it be very stiff? If you look at my model, um, most of the kind of outside hairs are a little flowy, but the stuff that's very close to the head is very stiff. It doesn't really move. Um, and that's just me trying to keep it as natural as possible because the hair that's very close to your head doesn't really move a lot. But the hair that's kind of out, uh, you know, and at the ends especially, uh, it's going to be more fluid and, and move a little bit more. Um, in all honesty, I think my model could probably have a little more movement in the hair, uh, maybe a few more bones, but. That's just something to keep in mind, um, and that's how I kind of design characters as well. It's just based on how the hair would move, you know, naturally. I guess is the best way to put it. So I got my hairs drawn out here. I've got different colors so we can kind of differentiate them and which ones have which bone parameters applied. And I'm just gonna pull the mesh out a little bit so it's just slightly away from the head because I really want you guys to get a good sense of how the bones are manipulating the hair. Good. We've got a nice little rainbow assortment to work with here, and they're all about average length. Um, they're not too short. They're not very long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the bone tab here. I'm just going to pick this first guy here, and I'm just going to click create bone group. This is how I create bones for any model I'm working with. Um, I don't recommend hitting the generate bone group button there at the bottom because that kind of does the work for you, but it doesn't do it very well, at least uh, from my experience. So if you're going to do it in clumps, like you have a lot of hair that's close together, or you're going to do them individually, um, that's that's the way to do it. Just select them, hit create a bone group, and just go from there. And so I'm just going to go here, and I'm also renaming all these so we can kind of correlate which colors have which bones, and we know what we're working with. So we're going along here, I'm going to kind of just progress down the list. So right off the bat, that's how it looks. It looks pretty natural, I mean, without even any adjustments. And for most people, most applications, that's really fine. You don't have to mess with the bones too much. But that's not what this tutorial is for, that's not what we're here to learn. Uh, we're here to learn about what the bones are going to do and what's going to be best for our characters. So for this green guy here, I'm going to crank up the bone count really high. And for this guy in the front here, I'm going to crank it really low. Let's just do like one. So, you can see side by side how it flows differently, obviously. So, even compared to the rest of them, which are still pretty bouncy, that blue one in the front is very stiff. It's not moving very far. That green one's kind of out of control. Uh, I'm also going to adjust the fixed point on that one all the way to the top of the head. So you get kind of a better gauge, there we go, of how flowy it can be with more bones. So, depending on... You know, if you're going for long hair, you probably want more bones. If you're going for really short hair, you probably want less bones. And if you don't want them to move, less bones is also a good option for that. So now that we know what the bone count and the fixed point does, we're going to move on to stiffness. Stiffness seems like it would be straightforward because, you know, stiffness. And you can kind of see, yeah, the white one is now stiffer, but it's not a whole lot stiffer than that yellow one that we haven't touched yet. So we're going to do the reverse for that yellow one. We're going to go in... And we're just going to crank it the other way for the yellow here. So let's pull that all the way down. So now we've got the least stiffness 
and it just kind of floats out there in space. Um, not usually a good application for that. I haven't come across any good uses for that, but uh, if, maybe if you got a little flyaways in your hair or something that you want fly floating away, that might be an option for you. But again, it doesn't seem that intuitive going the opposite direction, going lower on the stiffness, because it just automatically kind of makes it float. So we're going to move on and we're going to look at gravity a little bit here. Gravity is interesting because it's literally just the force that the hair is pulled down. So uh, it kind of goes hand in hand with stiffness if you want to have that stiffer hair look. Also you can see it's really not reacting to the running animation. It's very, very heavy looking, I guess is probably the right word for it. So if you don't want to have a lot of flop, you want to have a hair staying pretty stationary, Gravity can help you with that and keep that hair in place. So we're going to move on again. And I'm going to go ahead and crank up the gravity on the green one. And as you can see, where it would be bobbling around like crazy, it's actually pretty stiff. So even with all the bones in there, with the gravity cranked up, pulling it pretty much down, uh, we kind of lose all that wobble. So. That's something you can mess with if you still want to have, you can see there's still a little bit of wobble. If you still want to have that wobble, but you don't want it flying all over the place, crank up the gravity. So if you've got a lot of bones, but you want the hair to kind of look heavy, that's what you want to do. Have the bones, but add the gravity. And that'll keep it from flying all over the place, being crazy. So again, we've still got that red in the back, that's one we haven't touched, that one's still, still original. So let's go ahead and let's take this single bone guy in the front and let's mess with that just a little bit a little bit more so we know you know the bone count can affect the stiffness uh, the stiffness can affect the stiffness and the gravity can, can, can affect the stiffness as well so let's get it kind of back to where it was but we're gonna mess now with the hit radius and if you've worked with 3d models or you're familiar with game design the hit radius is the same as like a hit box um, which we would use in, in game development terms but it's basically an imaginary field around the object, around the hair in this instance. So if we crank that up, you can see the bone joints are getting really big. So there it is, just really low, very close to the head. But when we crank that up, it's going to kind of trick the hair into thinking that it's bigger than it is, I guess is the way to put it. And so it thinks it's colliding with, with the face in this instance. So it's push, pushing it away, and it's pushing it up from the fixed point. So if we crank it down a little bit, it's not going to be sticking up quite as much. So that's again if you want to have kind of flyaways or you need hair that's colliding with your character's model and you don't want it to collide, you can use that. Um, I'm going to adjust the fixed points just so you can kind of see. It's, it literally just goes from wherever the fixed point is. So you can set that up high, you can set that up low in the middle. So there's some unique applications for that. Uh, if you want to have kind of a slope down, but kind of a kind of a cowlick, you could probably utilize that. But that's what that hit radius does: is it thinks that it's touching the face, even though it's not. It creates like an imaginary barrier around the hair, and so it can prevent clipping, which is good in some situations. Um, Obviously for our guy here, not a great use of that slider, but I hope that kind of helps you understand what that does. Feel free to mix and match these. I hope this kind of gives you a high level understanding of what the bones do. Again, you're going to have the bone count, the stiffness, and the gravity that are going to kind of focus on how stiff or rigid your hair is, or how flowy it is. The fixed point is where all that functionality starts and ends. And then the hit radius is how close it's going to be to your model and other objects. So I hope this was helpful for you. If it is, please give me a thumbs up. If not, give me a thumbs down. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. See ya!